So now let's talk about the kinematic sequence. This is arguably one of my favorite topics to, to discuss simply because I work a lot in baseball in terms of my research, whether it's with baseball hitters or baseball pitchers, where the kinematic sequence is an important aspect of their mechanics. So the kinematic sequence refers to the timing in peak angular velocity of each relevant segment or joint that's involved with the movement task. So take, for example, this baseball player. He is hitting a baseball off a tee, and the graph here on the right represents the angular velocities of the pelvis, trunk, and shoulder. And right now, don't focus too much on the magnitude of angular velocity, but I want you to concentrate on the timing in which each one of these peaks occur. In fact, if you look at this, the peak angular velocity that occurs first is the pelvis, followed by the trunk, followed by the shoulder. That represents a, what's known as a proximal to distal sequence in segmental rotations, which equates to a certain flow of energy through the kinetic chain, what we call mechanical power. So if a player is efficient at performing this kinematic sequence, specifically in the proximal to the distal fashion, he potentially has the ability to maximize the energy to the throwing arm or through the, the swinging arm so that by the time he makes ball contact or releases the ball, if we're talking about a pitcher or a quarterback here, he is able to maximize angle velocity and subsequently maximize the linear velocity, what they call exit speed, at contact. And typically what you see in terms of sequential timing whether we're talking about a baseball pitcher or a baseball hitter, and it goes from the from the legs up through the pelvis, up through the trunk, and through the arms. And if we look at a, a baseball pitcher, here is a spatial model, a three-dimensional spatial model of a baseball pitcher. And this specifically is the mechanical power of the various segments of the body. And more specifically, it's the rate of energy transfer from one segment to the next. That equates to angular velocity because mechanical power is actually calculated using angular velocity. So when the segment reaches or turns red, as shown here, that indicates that the angular velocity for that particular segment is peaking. And look at the flow. Look at the flow of energy, mechanical energy, through the kinetic chain from the legs to the pelvis to the trunk and ultimately to the throwing arm. That should be that should equate to a proper kinematic sequence, specifically a proximal to distal kinematic sequence. And if we look at this player here, again, uh, pelvis is represented here by the red curve, the trunk represented here by the purplish curve, elbow is represented by the green, and then the gray curve is the shoulder internal rotation. Notice here that the sequence throughout the pitch cycle, and let me show you the pitch cycle. This is the what's called maximum high, uh, knee high, and then front foot contact is here, and then ball release. This right here represents the arm cocking and the arm accelerating phase. Look at the sequence. The sequence goes in a proximal to distal fashion. The only caveat for baseball pitching is that elbow extension angle velocity actually peaks just before the shoulder peaks in internal rotation. And what we believe is happening is that as the shoulder is internally rotating into ball release, the momentum that's generated from that motion itself passively ex extends the elbow where it peaks just right, right before, you know, we're talking a few milliseconds, right before the shoulder reaches its internal rotation velocity its peak rotation velocity at ball release. This red line represents ball release. So again, that's just a few milliseconds. So this was, a, for all intents and purposes, this is happening at the same time, where the person is, or the pitcher is internally rotating, or peaks and internally rotating, as well as extending the elbow. That combination, along with what's happening, you know, in the larger segment, in the larger proximal segments, equates to an, um, an angular velocity at the wrist and hand, and subsequently a maximum linear velocity of the ball at release. Um, this right here is a, um, a summarized graph of more specifically the timing of these various segments, the kinematic sequence, in relation to what we find in um, a sample of 33 adult pitchers here. So you can see for this player, his pelvis angle velocity peaks before front foot contact, which is actually a good thing, followed by the trunk, followed by the elbow, 
and shoulder. So this is pelvic uh, rotation, trunk rotation velocity, elbow extension velocity, and shoulder internal rotation velocity, which should peak right around ball release.